Something I just love about passive machines is the great double bed stitches they can make. And I like to try to reproduce them on Japanese style machines at times because sometimes that's what you want or have to work with. Some of the nicest ones, in my opinion, are the ones that imitate Aaron effects. Here's one from the DM80 book. You can easily create your own Aaron like patterns, and that's what I did for this shawl and it is covered in another video. And here's the fabric close up, but I really wanted to be able to also make a bulky version of this on my brother. Mine is a 260, so I am limited to the 24 stitch punch cart width. If you have a bulky that is electronic, you can do as we do on the pass up and do a whole bed design. We can knit across the whole bed, on a punch card machine, but it has to be a repeat of 24 stitches. So here's the one that I came up with. It has the same overall flavor, though it is more repetitive. And if you wanted to, you could work cables, either real cables or after the fact laced cables or some kind of faux cable on the stockinette portions that are vertical. The sample I'm going to knit with you is 34 stitches wide which comes out quite thick of fabric and just a hair under six inches wide. So you could make a great scarf just working with the information right here in this video. This is the back of the fabric, which is quite presentable also. If you want to make a shawl or a blanket, just add more and more stitches. Now here's the punch card and I'll show you how to create it and how to work with it. Here's the card, it's an original created by me. Every other stitch is on the main bed. Every column of stitches that you see a punch is a main bed stitch and we'll need to set up that way. Everywhere there's a column with no punches, that is a ribber only stitch. We will cast on 34 stitches in total. All of the stitches represented by columns that have no punches in will be ribber stitches only. Plus, there are some to the left and the right that we're going to place on the river only. Every time a hole is punched in the card, it will knit those needles. Every time there's a blank space in the card where there's a column of stitches actually in work, those needles will tuck. On the right half of the card, the tucking needles change position in the normal way. On the left half of the card, there are five in a row that tuck. This is possible because the alternate stitches are on the river, so we don't really have five stitches in a row tucking and it will work out fine. On the other half of the card, the tucking arrangement is the kind you're used to. The stitch represented by the marked column will also be on the river because it is not being used on the main bed. So in some places, there will be six stitches in a row on the river. Begin with the dial set to KC and the card locked on the first patterning row. I have a video showing you how to get that arranged and find that first patterning row and I'll put a link in the program notes. I arranged the initial setup before even putting yarn in the machine and I advise you to do the same, but we're gonna review it real quick here. And here I do already have some stockinette rows knitted. I then knitted a row, still stuck in it, but with KC engaged so that I could see the needles select. So we're looking here at the leftmost needle and the rightmost needle of the 24. The ones to either side of those belong on the riverbed. Now recall what the left side of the punch card looks like. These next few needles that were all selected, they obviously need to stay on the main bed. The ones in between them need to go to the river bed. Those that remain on the main bed are the ones that will alternately knit and tuck. The five center needles did not select. That corresponds to the blank spot on the card and they need to go and stay on the river. Now it gets just a tiny bit trickier because some of the needles selected and they are definitely main bed stitches those that are right next to them we know alternate with the river, but that center stitch that did not select 
will in the next row, if you recall the card. So it stays on the main bed. Now we set the card to advance. I'm using double length. You could certainly use single for a slightly different effect. The texture will be richer with double length, however. Now depress both tuck buttons and let's knit. Working with five or six stitches in a row on the edge of the river is most unusual. The machine doesn't love it. And so it's extra important that you use plenty of weights. My personal first choice is the heavy forks that I'm showing you. You can make your own using my Cool Tools and Cheap Tricks book, and I will put a link to that in the program notes. You can also use seven wires or a bunch of claw weights. The knitting is very straightforward. Just go slowly. On the left side of the card, we were on a knit row. On the right side, we were on a tuck two stitches only. Now we tucked on the left and have changed stitches on the right, and that keeps happening. The varying changes in the tuck stitch are what creates the pretty texture that mimics Aaron Designs. Stitch size 4-4 four, four is working for me with ordinary worsted weight number 4 yarn. Here's a good close look at the changes in the tuck pattern that we created by making the card as we did. And of course, every ribber stitch knits every row. Move your edge weights up often to avoid mishap. And that's all there is to it. The easiest Aran look fabric you will ever knit. If you subscribe to Country Knitting of Maine News and Views, you will soon see a pattern using this technique that includes scarves, shawls, blankets, and perhaps pillows. Those would be nice too. Okay, here's how to punch the card. The entire thing is a repeat of the two rows you see here. You would go the rest of the way up the card, punching as much as you needed in order to create the overlap and use the clip, alternately punching this row as indicated by the arrow, and this row. Notice that the second row I've shown you only has two holes punched in it. So have fun with it. Happy knitting.